In this video, sponsored by Monument Hobbies, I'm going to teach you the quick and easy way to paint the skeletons in the new Warhammer quest, Cursed City. The new Warhammer Quest Cursed City has obviously made a lot of news recently in its release, in its being sold out, in its being unclear whether there's going to be more coming or not, and back and forth and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, if you haven't been able to get it from their website, from the Games Workshop website, check your local stores. I know that there's at least a couple local stores near me that still have it in stock, and I bet there's probably some near you as well. These things have a tendency to sell out quickly on the website, but check your local stores. Not only is it not a bad idea to support your local stores, but you can also end up finding stuff that you might have thought was actually not available. So do that first. But if you have these skeletons, or if you have some other skeletons that are maybe kind of look the same, or you know have a lot of armor, a lot of cloth, not necessarily a lot of bone, then you know follow along and, and you'll learn something, I hope. So first step, of course, is you build your models. Now with these particular models from Cursed City, most of them, not including the base, are two pieces. Some are three pieces. They go together very easily, very quick. Um, I was pretty happy with the build on these. I whipped through all 10 of them very quickly. And so you can do that, put them together. And now it's obviously time to start thinking about priming. Now, normally with skeletons, I would prime them skeleton color, which just seems to save you a step. I made a video about how to quickly or possibly quick and easy, paint your skeleton a horde a number of years back. Pachow. And in that, we started off with like a camouflage kind of khaki color from um, Krylon. A lot of K's right there. All in one. But it, the idea is that it's a, you know, it, it, basically I'm going to put primer on there that is already the base color of the skeleton, the bone, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm saving myself a step. But these guys are a little different. These skeletons, they're skeletons. But uh, there's not a lot of uh, bone showing. My initial plan was to do a zenithal highlight. I like doing zenithal highlights, and I'll explain what that means in a second. But it wasn't going to be a normal black and white zenithal highlight. I was going to go with black and then silver as the highlight color because there's so much armor on these uh, uh, dudes. I think they're all dudes. I have no idea. But there's a lot of armor going on there. And so because of this, I thought, well, okay, obviously we're not going to work with the bone color necessarily right off the bat for the primer because of the overall model, most of it is not bone. You see some face, you see some arms and some knees and some ankles, and that's about it. You don't really see a lot of bone on these particular skeletons because they're covered in a lot of cloth and armor. So let's work with the armor color. But as I started to look at them more... I started to realize that the real drama in the sculpts, and I do think that they're very cool sculpts with a decent amount of drama, but the drama in the sculpts is in the cloth, uh, the kind of flowing, tattered sort of uh, battle dress kind of sort of whatever that you'd call that situation. Um, it, okay, admittedly, admittedly, it does drive me a little bit nuts that some of them blow one way, whereas other ones are blowing the other way. I don't quit, whatever. But nonetheless, that, that kind of tattered sort of cloth is really, I think, the focal point of these models that makes them the most interesting looking. And so I decided it was going to be an important thing to accentuate that. So I decided to Zenithal highlight, but I went back to the old standard white on top of black. Now, a quick overview of what a Zenithal highlight is. It's basically you prime the entire model black, and that is the base, the shadow, that's everything. You get into all the nooks and crannies, up underneath the arms and up underneath the battle dress and all these different places. Get the black everywhere you can. Rattle can will work. Airbrush will work a little bit easier, in my opinion, but you can even do it with a brush, you know, just paint it on there. But you need the black to be in every last little nook and cranny on that model. You let it dry for a little bit. And then you decide it is now time to work uh, with a color, a highlight color that is coming from above. Because color, you know, light comes from the sky, generally, if you're outdoors, um, unless you're, it's at night and you're standing in lava. I guess then it comes from underneath. But in general, light's coming from above. So you basically spray white or whatever color you're going to use for your highlight down from above. Now, like I said, originally the plan is I was going to paint silver down from above to make all the armor have dark parts in the nooks and crannies but bright silver in all the high raised parts. Well, now since I'm actually focusing on the cloth, I'm still doing the same, but I'm using a white spray. Now for the primer, like I said, uh, you know, 
So you start with black and you let that sit. And then I took a white primer and I used a, a Monument Hobbies white primer, Pro Acryl white primer. I've been really happy with the new primers that they've put out with. And uh, I used that. The, the white works so well because it doesn't get dusty. It doesn't get splattery. It just goes through my airbrush so nice. But you can also put it on with a regular brush as well. But if you're going to do a Zenithal highlight with a regular brush, let me just hang on. So with a Zenithal, you've got your model and you're spraying it from above kind of at like a, maybe a 30 degree angle, like this, in, in, envision there's a cone here and you're spraying down on the model. That way the white is getting on top of the head, on top of the shoulders, on top of the gun, if they were like a, you know, some sort of figure like that. In this situation, it would get on top of the, the skirt, the battle dress and all the stuff that's sticking out, but it wouldn't get between the legs. It wouldn't get under the arm. It wouldn't get under the chin as they're wearing their helmet and all that kind of stuff. And that area stays shadow. So you just do that real quickly and then let that all dry. And then you're ready to go on from there. Now, like I said, if you don't have an airbrush and you don't want to use a rattle can for your, um, your white kind of highlight in that Zenithal situation, you can also use a big fat makeup brush and then just dry brush the white over the black. You're going to want the black to probably dry a little bit longer. That first layer you put down, you want to wait for it, maybe a couple of hours, or take an, uh, a, a hair dryer and kind of blow over it real hard to get it like kind of really nice and cured onto the model because sometimes. And with makeup brushes are pretty soft, this shouldn't happen. But I have seen sometimes if you don't let primer set up long enough, you will almost even brush it off a little bit with dry brushing. So you could use that dry brushing of a white with a big fat makeup brush. But I would suggest using a spray, whether it's a rattle can or in best situation, I would use an airbrush. And then once you've got that great black and white kind of fade ready to go, you're on to the next step. Now the key to a Zenithal highlight is that you want to use transparent colors over that black and white. There's not a great purpose to putting that great black and white gradient over the top of the model to simulate light from above and shadow in the crevices if you then cover it with opaque paint. And we are going to cover some of it with opaque paint, metallics and bone color. But for the skirt, which is what we did this whole kind of Zenithal highlight for, the skirt needs to be a color and I wanted it to be something that was not too saturated with color. These skeletons have been around for a while. They're old. They're not taking care of their outfits very much. They don't polish. They don't, they don't have washing machines. So we want these battle dresses to be kind of, uh, you know, a little bleached, but also a little grungy and a little kind of not too bright, and I, but I still wanted it to be kind of red. I wanted everything on this model to be in the kind of warmer color spectrum. So I decided to go with a color called Drying Blood from Secret Weapon. Now Secret Weapon makes a line of washes, which I love and I own, I think most of them, if not all of them. The washes are really a little bit more like glazes, really. So they're thicker than a normal wash like you would expect from Games Workshop or the Army Painter, or, you know, people like that. It is designed to be a little bit more like a glaze, but they still call them washes. But they're still a lovely transparent color that works perfectly over Zenithal highlights. I did a video a long time ago about painting Malifaux Cruise. It's called Understanding Underpainting, Pachow. And in that, I used a lot of secret weapon washes over black and white Zenithal. And that's another thing that you should do here. Once you've got that black and white Zenithal down, if you're focusing on the, the clothes, then you, you find a transparent color. Now you could use a contrast color from Games Workshop. Uh, you could use a, a, a glaze like this. You could use an ink. There's lots of different things, but you want a transparent color over the cloth because then you'll get highlights in certain areas and dark parts in the shadows, and it will save you a ton of time and look really good as well. Then my next step, because again, we're talking about skeletons and we're talking about dirt, and we're talking about me. I like to put wash on stuff. So I threw some Agrax Earthshade over the drying blood once it was well, dried. Drying blood is the name of the color. But you know, anyway, I threw a little bit of Agrax Earthshade in there, especially focusing on the crevices and the folds a little bit to get a little bit more kind of uh, muddy, dark, kind of just overall grunge into that cloth. You don't want that cloth to look like really nice because they're skeletons. Again, I'm going to make that point over and over again. And the reason I didn't use a black wash instead of the brown wash is, again, I wanted it to be kind of a warmer spectrum and I wanted that to just be a little bit more mud as a little bit less soot. Now we're going to lay down our first opaque color. Now, you may say, well, I 
did all the Zenithal Prime that you wanted me to do and all that. Now you're going to want me to start covering it up? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. But just on the bone parts, okay? So all the actual exposed bone, and there's not a lot of it because, like I said, you know, that's why we didn't start off by priming this guy in a khaki or some sort of other kind of bone off-white color. You, you go through and you throw down some brown over those bone parts because that is then the base color that we're going to put actual bone color over a little bit later on. The benefit to throwing down that brown color as a base is that when you then go back and start to put in some of the actual, like, I'll be using a color called uh, olive flesh from Proacryl, but it'll be basically like a kind of an ivory, like a slightly darker ivory. Any spots that you miss, any little crevices, as long as you got in there a little bit more with the brown, then those little extra crevices, it'll be just like a dark warm shadow, which will make a little bit more sense. If that color underneath there was still maybe a little bit of white from the overspray from the Zenithal, or maybe it was even potentially just straight black, it doesn't match as well with the warm color of the kind of off-white ivory. So I always, no matter whether I'm painting bone or horn or big teeth and fangs, I always start with a nice chocolate brown. In this case, I'm pretty sure it's dark umber. And then um, the next steps, I'll kind of cover that up a little bit. But you want to have a good base color underneath the bone color to make it work well. So now that all the bone is base coated brown, we're not going to go on with the bone right away yet. What we're going to do instead is we're going to now go through and get all the metal parts. So in this situation, I'm using a Vallejo Model Metallic Air, which I did a video about again just recently, but ciao. And that is about, uh, that's an, actually an airbrush paint, but it works spectacularly well with a brush. It is a one coat, no brush streaking, perfect kind of silver metallic. And it comes in a bunch of different colors. The color I used here is called steel, which is just a little bit darker than like, let's say regular silver or chrome, which is even brighter. Um, but again, we want these skeletons to be kind of grungy. So I used a bit of a darker base color silver and I just basically put it on the armor parts, the chest plate, the greaves. Some of them have kind of leg armor, the shields, the heads to the spears. Some of them even have swords. You got to cover all those parts with the silver. And then that silver is far too silver. So now it is time to throw, I guess, uh, you know, some more Agrax Earthshade on it. Now, again, I'm using Agrax Earthshade over the silver as opposed to using, say, like a Nuln Oil color because, again, I want, the, I want things to be dirty, not greasy or oily. If you throw a black wash over silver, that, that what you've just done kind of makes it look a little bit more greasy, which is great for engine parts uh, and stuff like that. Sometimes even guns makes sense. With these guys, I want them to not only look kind of dirty with just dirt on them, but also I want, I'm going to be heading a lot of this metal towards corrosion and rust and starting with a base that is a nice kind of warm color is going to work out great. Once that's dried, I like to generally throw a bit of a second layer of the same wash, but you have to wait for the first layer to dry. Um, specifically with Games Workshop's washes, they are waterproof once they dry. So if you try to throw a second layer down when it hasn't dried yet, it won't really do much except kind of move everything around. But if that first layer is dry and you throw a second layer on top of it, it will just darken it even a little bit more. So I put it in some little areas that I think need a little bit more attention. Um, the shields are big and round and kind of, you know, convex. So the bottom part would get more shadow, whereas the top part would get more hit from the above with light. So I'll throw a little bit more wash into the bottom parts as well. But just in the kind of relief parts of the bottom, there's the other kind of filigree parts that stick out. Those parts I stay away from. And then it kind of also just makes everything in the shield just look a little bit more visually interesting that way. Now, once that's all dry, it is time to start painting over all the dark brown kind of uh, undercoating that we did for all the bone parts. And again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm using a color called Olive Flesh from Proacryl from Monument Hobbies. You can use whatever kind of color you want that's in the bone color spectrum, ivory, off-white, um, bleached bone. There's all kinds of different stuff from all kinds of different companies out there. And you know what you like when you're working on painting skeletons, but start with that color and then just basically go over and put it on the head to put it on all of the femurs and the tibias and the, all the different bone parts that are sticking out. And with these guys, there's some spots specifically getting up under that kind of battle dress area and getting it like the hip bones and things like that. It's a little hard to get in there. I'm not going to lie, but just take some time and just get in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of need some lines. You're almost like edge highlighting in certain spots because you don't care so much if you don't get every last little nook and cranny because that brown is already there, is in every nook and cranny on the bone parts. So again, it's going to act like a bit, a bit of a shadow and it's going to work out real well. And then we're going to tie it together with a wash 
and that'll bring everything together. Once all the bone parts are dry with that kind of bone color over the original dark brown chocolate base, you then take a seraphim sepia is what I'm going to use, but you use whatever kind of sepia wash you like. And then you just basically slop that over everything. And what that's going to do is it's going to darken down the kind of ivory, off-white, bleach bone, whatever color you used, it's going to darken that down a little bit. And then we're going to go back and highlight it in a little bit to bring it. Anyway, but it darkens it down, but it also helps it tie together with different spots. So like when the bone comes very close to the armor, like on the back of the leg and places like that, it's just going to help fill everything in. And it's kind of like it's outlining everything so you don't see spots where the color didn't match perfectly. You're just kind of slopping a bunch of wash in there and it's helping to make it look a little bit like you knew a little bit more like what you were doing, which is always kind of the benefit to uh, trying to find these different types of efficiencies. Throw some wash on there and then again, let it completely dry. And then we're going to go on to doing a little bit of highlighting. Now, before we go on to the standard highlighting, there are two uh, skeleton warriors in this group of 10 who don't have helmets on. The rest of them all have helmets, but two of them lost their helmets at some point and it's fine. So I took a, a makeup brush and a little bit of the same color that I started with, which in my case was the olive flesh, and I just dry brushed it on the top of the skull and bit on the face and stuff like that using a much smaller makeup brush. Not one of the big honking ones, but a bit of a smaller one. I think this one's called a concealer brush technically. And it works out really well to just sort of blend because like the top of the head should be the lightest possible with the skeleton because it's just getting sun bleached from them marching around from place to place and all that stuff. And lost their helmets and so you know those two guys need a little bit of extra love and you can do that it really makes them kind of pop out a little bit more from the rest of the folks but once you got those two done then get your regular brush out and uh, again you can use the same color that you originally used that same in my case olive flesh but whatever color you use to paint over the dark brown you then threw wash over it so it got darker and now you can just go back with that same color again and kind of highlight again now if let's say you've got a bone let's say it's a femur, don't necessarily completely paint it as, as, as much as you did with the original base kind of bone color, right? You might want to just catch it from a little bit towards the end and then all the way and then stop, that kind of thing. That's what a highlight is. If you just go back over and paint everything that you just put wash over again, it's kind of like you didn't do a lot. It helps that it sort of ties together around the areas, you know, the edges where the colors kind of maybe match other colors or meet other colors and things like that. Washes always help to tie those together and hide sins. But if you can start with the base color, throw a wash over it, and then after that's dry, go back to highlight and not completely cover it up again, you're going to get a bit of a gradient, a little bit of a brighter spot to a little bit of a darker spot down to the darker spots even yet. That's kind of the trick. That's what you're trying to do in this situation. So give that a try. Now we're getting towards the end. Um, you paint the, uh, the handles, the hafts, I think that's what they're called maybe, of the spears. I used uh, Wildwood, which is a contrast color from Games Workshop, and it's a very liquid, very fast color. Uh, as far as contrast paints go, it's pretty opaque, but it's a very quick thing that you can kind of just put on there to make the, the handles nice and dark that they're holding onto on their, on their um, the, 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 the spears. And, and you can dry brush a little bit of a highlight later on if you want to, potentially when we get to the dry brushing on the cloth phase. You could just throw a little bit of that, that on there. Or if you wanted to dry brush with a little bit more of a wood color and a little bit less of a, of a gray dust color, then you could do that separately. But either way, a little bit of dry brush on top of that wildwood, once it's dry, will actually bring the texture of those, those uh, because the, they're, they're not just straight pipes. They've got a little bit of a wood thing going on in there and it really kind of helps bring out the texture and uh, it makes the, the spears look a lot nicer. Now there is a little bit of leather on these guys. Um, they're all wearing chest plates, but there's nothing on the back. So there's just a crisscrossing straps that go kind of on their back to hold the chest plate onto their rib cage. And those I painted with snake bite leather, which again is a contrast color from Games Workshop. And if you've already done that Zenithal highlight in the beginning step, there's probably a little bit of a gradient or a fade going on on those straps on his back each one of these guys. So throwing a bit of a transparent color, but it's still a pretty good solid color. Um, snake bite leather. It's a great color. It's one of my favorite paints from that line. Throw that on that crisscross and it will look like a nice kind of leather strap holding this chest plate on. So, you know, they don't lose it. They also have little straps uh, holding, you know, that their hands hold onto their shields with, and you can use that same snake bite leather in there as well. And then there's also like a 
little metal clasp. And if you want to at that some point, you can either throw down another silver on top of that, or I actually threw down a bit of a bronze or brass or something like that that worked actually quite well. So all of those things kind of tied together, finish up the overall shield, and uh, there's only a little bit more work left to go. It's time to do a little bit of highlighting on the metal. Now, you don't want to go crazy with it, but it does help to kind of catch a little bit more highlight, make the metal sort of pop, for lack of a better word, a bit more. You can use the same kind of steel color that we used initially, or whatever color you might have used. But if you've got a slightly brighter color of a, of a you know of a silver in this situation, that might be a little better for the highlights. I used uh, the Vallejo Chrome color from the Model Metallic Air uh, line, which is a brighter color than the steel. And I just basically caught the tops of the shields because they got that rounded top sort of, so you just sort of catch in there. And again, it's a, it's relatively simple edge highlighting but I kind of caught across the top of that. Spikes on the helmets, a little bit of edging on the spears and on the sh uh, swords, and um, here and there. You just kind of get the use to it. You just sort of start to get feel for like where I should do it. Like don't do it on the underside of anything that's metal because that's where the shadows should be. Do it on the top parts that are pointing up. That's where you, sh you should throw your highlights. And just don't go crazy with it. Maybe start real simple and then look at them all and say, well, maybe they could use a little bit more. And then you can kind of touch them up and go from there. But uh, yeah, the important thing is to start small because if you go heavy right off the bat, you will be too far and it's hard to erase. So now we're back to the makeup brushes and we're putting a little bit of a gray and I'm using basically a kind of bright neutral gray uh, to just dry brush some gray with a real small little kind of concealer brush again, makeup brush. Cheap makeup brushes are awesome. And I'm doing it on the sort of the ends and the tips of these pieces of cloth. And you want to have, you want to brush off as much paint as possible onto, you know, off of that brush before you actually start putting it on the model because you want it to be as subtle as possible. Building it up slowly is way better than putting it on too quickly and putting on too much. So if you can, if it takes you 20 or 30 strokes back and forth to get it to where you want, that's better than realizing on the third stroke that that was too much. You know what I mean? You can't go backwards. There's no control Z. So slowly building up, it allows you to give a gradient to it and everything like that, make things look really cool. So using a makeup brush on those little kind of tips like that really is going to make them kind of tie into the, to the base and to the dirt and to the soot and to the grave dust and that kind of stuff. It just makes the models look a lot cooler. The last two steps are basically just to sort of beat up that metal a little bit more. I will go back and add a little bit more of the Agrax Earthshade wash in certain little spots on the insides of the shields and places like that, just to kind of throw in a little bit more shadow, a little bit more grunge, a little bit more dirt and corrosion. But it's again, it's a wash. So you're just basically kind of letting it flow around and get into the crevices. Now, if you want actual spot kind of like rust or corrosion, we're not gonna go full blown orange rust. We're instead gonna go with something, we, we go with Agoros Dunes, which again is another um, contrast color from Games Workshop. And you're gonna take uh, probably your smallest brush and get some Agoros Dunes on there and stipple, just little points. You're gonna do a little bit of pointillism, which I've also talked about before. I think I'm out of Pachows. So I don't know, just go, I'll put it in the description below. But, um, yeah, little tiny points uh, just here and there to be like spots of rust. And you kind of catch it along in places where you think that water might collect and stuff like that. It's, again, there's no good hard and fast on how this is done. It's a little bit of your eye and just kind of figuring out what you think looks cool. But you do that and um, your models are finished. You're ready to go. And uh, again, you want to paint probably all 10 of them at once. If you want to break them up into five and five and do that kind of assembly line because you're not good with doing 10 at a time, that's totally fine. Um, but 10 is how I did it on, well, this is all, all this footage is from Twitch, obviously. And uh, they turned out really well and I was really happy with them. And so if you're interested and you've got the ability to, do, to work on these models, and again, this same exact technique can work on models that aren't Cursed City. There's plenty of companies out there that make skeletons that are kind of wearing some armor and some clothes and this will work well for that too. Feel free to go ahead. Again, the most important thing I think about this particular model set was from looking at it from the, the get-go and figuring out how I wanted to prime it, deciding I wanted to go with a standard black and white Zenithal because of the drama of the flowing kind of robes. That was super important. Skeletons that have a lot more bone exposed, you know, like they're not wearing as much armor or not wearing as much clothes, I would have absolutely primed them a bone color because that would have just saved me again a bunch of time. But because I wanted the really interesting kind of flow to these to these um, 
you know, these, uh, these, these pieces of cloth coming off of their armor. That was why I decided to prime them in that fashion. So I hope this was helpful and I hope that you can paint some fun skeletons. Again, whether they're the cursed, you know, city skeletons or if you're unable to get those, you could use some other skeletons. There's a lot of skeleton models out there for you to paint. But again, you know, have fun with it. Do it quickly. Don't spend forever on it because there's a whole bunch of them. And there's, if you are painting Cursed City, you've got a lot more models to paint in that box. Are you having a hard time finding a good primer? I've been using the same kind of airbrush primer for a number of years, and it's worked fine. But then our friends at Monument Hobbies in their Pro Acro line came out with airbrush primers. But you can also use them with a normal, you know, paint-on brush as well. But I am very impressed. I'm a very happy camper with this new release. There are currently five colors. There's black. There's white. There is a brown black or black brown, I can never remember, but it's a very dark, dark, dark brown. There's a dark military green for those of you who are into, let's say, Imperial Guard and stuff like that. And then there's also like kind of a medium gray that works out really well as well. So you have a lot of different options, whether you like to prime black, whether you like to prime gray, whether you like to prime white. And the white, ugh, I gotta be perfectly honest with you, this is the best white primer I've ever used. And I've been looking for a really good white primer that doesn't speckle, that doesn't look dusty. There's something about white primer, probably because of the particles of the actual pigment, they need to be larger for some reason, and I'm no paint scientist, but this stuff is very, very, very smooth, especially if you're doing a Zenithal highlight. When you paint everything black and then spray from above with the Monument Pro Acryl white primer, I'm super happy with the results. And I had been looking for something for quite some time that was gonna stop speckling stuff as much. And I had even started looking at like acrylic inks and then mixing stuff with it and this and that and the other thing. I've been super happy with the white primer from these guys and uh, I haven't had to look back since. So if you're interested, and if you haven't bought anything from them in the past, you can get 10% off your first order by using offer code Tabletop Minions at checkout. And you can get 10% off not just the primers, but also their entire line of opaque paints, also their brushes, which I'm also a big fan of. Like everything that's on the website, you can get 10% off your first order. Now, if you've already done this, because you've been watching me on Twitch when I talk about the stuff and that kind of thing, and you wanna make a new order, you wanna get some primers and that kind of stuff, I'm gonna put a link below in the description that you can also use, which is like an affiliate refer link. So you won't get any money off, but if you wanna help support the channel, that'll be a link you could follow as well. But either way, if you've never ordered from them before, I would definitely take a look and get yourself 10% off, help to support the channel as well, affiliate link, monumenthobbies.com. There's a lot of stuff there to look at and um, I love their paints and I really love their primers now and, uh, and their brushes. So take a look.